Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and this is a question that I'm going to answer from one of the UK A-level papers from June 2022. This is from the paper one of the A-level 9MA01. This question here is all about transformations of functions, and it's a really important question, um, especially related to some of the questions that came up in January 2023, which I'm not allowed to upload right now. But I'm going to go through some of the principles involved in those questions. I will use this question to help you understand those principles. Uh, those of you who have access to that paper and uh, should will understand hopefully what I'm trying to um, talk about now. Anyway, so let's first answer the question as it is, and then I'm going to relate it to the question that I'm trying to help you with from that paper. So first of all, it says the point P minus 2 minus 5 lies on the curve with equation y equals f of x, where x is an element of the real numbers. It says find the point to which P is mapped when the curve with equation y equals f of x is transformed to the curve with equation y equals f of x plus 2. So this is a simple type of transformation, which is from P1. When you add something to the whole function that affects only the y-coordinates, you just add that same amount to the y-coordinate, acts as normal as outside the function, only affects when it's outside the function, it causes vertical change. Adding to, you basically increase the y-coordinates by 2. So the point P minus 2 minus 5, simply becomes the x-coordinate is unchanged. There's nothing happening inside the function, inside the bracket, it's exactly the same, no change. So that stays as negative 2, but this minus 5, you have to add 2 to it. This, you have to add 2 to it, okay, because it's f of x plus 2. So you end up with the new, the image of p is now minus 2, minus 3. And there's the answer to part A, simple as that. All right, for part B, we have the modulus function. Okay, the modulus function, the modulus of f of x. Now, how does a modulus function work? So, for example, if you have something like a graph like this, say it goes like this, and anything that's above the y axis, the x axis, when, when you have the, the modulus like this, anything that's above the x axis, it doesn't change. But anything below the x axis, it reflects in the x axis. So it reflects in the x-axis. So here, again, it's only the x, the y coordinate that that remain that that change. The x coordinate is unaffected, okay? Because it's like the whole function; it's affecting the whole function, right? So only the y coordinates are affected, not the x coordinates. Inside the function, there's nothing happening. If it was f modulus of x, that would be a different case. Here, the x coordinates are affected, and the y coordinates are not affected, right? So here, only the x-coordinates are affected. So only the y-coordinates are affected. So the, the, the x-coordinate stays as minus 2. So the image of P is going to be minus 2. Now, if the y-coordinate is positive, it will remain unchanged because it's already positive. The modulus of something positive is something positive. But if the y-coordinate is negative, then it will change its sign. And that's the case here. This is going to become 5 because the modulus of minus 5 is equal to 5, right? So this is now the new coordinate of P under this transformation where the modulus sign, the whole function is inside the modulus sign rather than the modulus sign being inside the function. Okay, so that's part B. Now part C is more related to P3. Well, in fact, B and C. B is also related to P3. C is related to P3, P, P3 because we have a combination of transformations taking place. You have different things happening, right? There's three different things going on. So when we have a combination of transformations taking place, when we have more than one transformation at a time, we always start with what's inside the function. We always start with what's inside the function. So we start with f, x minus two. Now, here we have the x coordinates will be affected by this. The x coordinate will be affected by this, Okay, so the, the coordinate minus 2, minus 5 is going to become, let's call this P dash 1, right? This is from 1. What's going to happen is the Y coordinate will not be changed. That's going to be minus 5. But the X coordinate is going to be changed. 
okay? And this is where you're adding or subtracting something to the, you know, um, x, x value. So here, when it's inside the function, it does the opposite. So x minus 2 means a translation, means a translation of the opposite, 2, 0. Instead of minus 2, 0, it's 2, 0. So you add 2, you add 2 to the x values. Two x values. So I'm going to take the minus 2 um, and I'm going to add 2 to it. So that's going to give me 0. So that's the transformation. That's dealt with this part now. Second, we've got the other things which are all outside the function. This is 3 times the whole function plus 2. So we're going to deal with what's outside now. Okay, outside we have first 3 times f x minus 2. So we're going to deal with that first. That's what we're going to deal with. So here we're going to have um, the y coordinates are going to be affected. So now we end up with, we have 0. We've got that far. Okay. And we have the minus 5. Okay. But what we have to do is, it's the y coordinate that changes. This is a call, this is a stretch in the y direction. And the factor is 3. The factor is 3. So you multiply this by 3. So the image after the second part of the transformation, the x stays at 0, but the y becomes, if you multiply by 3, becomes a negative 15. Okay, minus 5 times 3 is 15, negative 15. All right? And then finally, the third thing that's happening here is you're adding 2 to the whole function. You're adding 2 to the whole function. So now we have 3 times fx minus 2. Okay, and now we're dealing with the plus 2 part. We're adding 2 to the whole function. So now we're dealing with this part here, adding 2 to the whole function. Right? So that means the y coordinate, the x coordinate still stays the same, but the y coordinate, which is now minus 15, you have to add 2 to it. This is a this is a translation, this is a translation, okay, of 0, 2, okay? It's a vertical uh, translation of 2 units. So you add 2 to the minus 15, and that will give us a minus 13. So we end up with the final answer will be 0 and negative 13. So the image of P after the transformation, the whole transformation is 0, negative 13. Okay, that's important for us to know how to deal with the different types of transformations and how points are, you know, transformed to, uh, to the images. Now, the point I'm going to make here now, which is related to a question in some of the papers that are locked right now, at this point in time, which is right now, it's like the 22nd of May 2023. So this is prior to the P3 exam in May. So the locked papers are the October paper and the January paper prior to this. Um, there's some questions there dealing with, they're talking about the maximum and minimum value of certain functions. And they're saying, you know, for example, find the minimum value of f of x under the transformation, for example, minus 2 f of x. Right, so what, what would the what would be the minimum value of this, okay, function, under this transformation? What would be the minimum value of this, this, okay, the minimum value of this value? So there might be a value which is a maximum here, okay, a maximum in f of x will be a minimum in minus two f of x. Why? Because it reflects in the x-axis. So for example, you might have a point that's a maximum in f of x. Supposing this is a maximum in f of x. A maximum meaning it's, gonna, it's a turning point where the curve opens downwards. The highest it can go in that particular region. So that maximum under this transformation is going to look like this because it's going to reflect in the x-axis. Even if it's below, it's going to look like this. It's going to become a minimum, meaning it doesn't, doesn't mean it's going to be lower than this, but it means it's going to change its shape from from the, from a, a maximum shape like this to a minimum shape like this, because when it reflects in the x-axis, wherever it is, it's going to change 
its shape. It's going to look like this instead of that, right? So in, in a question like that, for example, let me just um, think of an example. Supposing we had a question where it says, let's say this same question, this point minus 2, 5, minus 2, minus 5. Supposing they said that this is a maximum, okay, this is a maximum in f of x, all right? So they want you to find the, the minimum, okay, in f in minus, say, minus 3f, say, 2x, the minimum coordinate. Right, so what you would say is that the minimum value of this now, if it was a maximum f of x, this is now going to become a minimum in this function. Why? Because you you have to multiply the x, the y coordinates by negative three. So it's going to, if this was look like looking like that, it's now going to reflect and look like that. So this point is now going to become minus one because the x coordinates are halved, and you're going to multiply the y coordinates by minus 3. It's going to become minus 115. And it's going to look like this instead of like that. If it was a maximum there, it's going to be minimum here. Because you're multiplying the whole function by something negative. So it's going to reflect in the x-axis. So it's going to change its shape from maximum to minimum. Okay, so that's a little bit of a um, kind of a side point. Okay, that hopefully will help you understand uh, some questions. For those of you who are doing the... Uh, International A level paper, some questions in, in there's a question that specifically involves trig identities as well. Okay. And at the end, there's questions about transformations. Hopefully, I hope that will make you understand how to do that question in that particular, uh, in those papers. Okay. So um, thank you for watching. Other questions from this particular paper, this June 2022, paper one from the A level from the UK. You can find other questions I answer from this paper in the playlist that will appear over here. Other questions dealing with transformations in P3, you can find in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can watch a video which will appear, the link will appear here, which will tell you how to use my channel in an effective way. Thank you for watching and see you soon.